together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the blessings. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. In Christ we also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. For him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? 
and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us to believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this, this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to sing, Aaron and sing, come to live like smoke. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, open our ears that we might hear you. Open our eyes that we might see you. 
Open our hearts to the wonders of your love. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. As I was studying our gospel with Jesus giving us a litany of blessings and woes, and thinking about this being our celebration of All Saints Day, I was reminded of two of our very earliest holy women, Perpetua and Felicity. Who are Perpetua and Felicity? Well, I will tell you. <laughs> they were two women of the third century who faced persecution and were martyred for being Christians in the time of Roman oppression. Perpetua is the one who we know the most about because she kept a diary of her ordeal. Both she and Felicity were pregnant and gave birth in prison and surrendered their children to family members to raise and care for them. Perpetua's father kept pleading with her to renounce her beliefs, but she refused. She had visions while in prison, kind of like Daniel's reading of today, where she felt confirmed in her faith in Christ and her rejection of the demands of Roman society. Perpetua was supposed to devote her life to caring for her father. Instead, she devoted her life to Christ. Eventually, she and Felicity and the other Christian martyrs were brought to the amphitheater, whipped by gladiators, and then the Romans unleashed a boar, a bear, a leopard, and a wild cow to attack them. An editor finished Perpetua's diary, noting that after the wild beasts had had their way with the Christians, these Christians gave each other a kiss of peace as soldiers stabbed them with swords. Perpetua's executioner was apparently new on the job and not very skilled, so she reportedly took his weapon and helped him with joy to slash her neck. And the story ends with the extolling of the virtues of these early martyrs of Christianity. Such an account of a life certainly leaves one to ponder the meaning of, blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. At the inquiry class on Wednesday night, a question came up about the saints and the meaning of the saints. Do we worship saints? The short answer is no, we don't worship them. We look to them as examples of a life well lived in a Godward direction that we should learn about and then emulate. Now fortunately, we aren't living in a time or a place where we're jailed for our Christianity. And, thanks be to God, we don't have to worry about being fed to wild animals as sport for the masses to show our faithfulness to Jesus. But what we can take from the story of two women such as Perpetua and Felicity is an example of remaining faithful. Sticking close to the source of our faith, even when all odds are stacked against us and there is enormous pressure for us to turn away from our faith. That tension still exists in our world today in big and small ways. Election season always seems to bring out the worst in us. I was once asked how the state legislature in Florida might address the problem of bullying in the schools. Well, I said, we might start with the political ads y'all run during the campaigns. Kids see their political leaders mocking and attacking each other. What do you think they're going to do in school? Um, I was never invited back to another uh, public policy meeting after that. We didn't hear this part today, but Jesus' address to the crowd with these blessings and woes was delivered on the plain. In Matthew's version, they're with him up on a mountain. But here in Luke, Jesus is on the level with everybody. 
already laying out the Beatitudes. How do we take what Jesus says here? Some have read these words as saying that things like, uh, it's so much better for those who are poor and hungry and weeping when they die and go to heaven. Your life is terrible on earth. You'll be so happy when you're dead. I don't believe that's what Jesus is saying. What we must remember, especially since this is Luke's gospel, Jesus is the poor, the hungry, the weeping. Jesus is talking in the present moment, both his and ours. Jesus is a member of the oppressed and occupied Jewish people living under the rule of the Roman Empire. These words, which seem so contradictory to logic, are a way to remind his disciples, both those who were with him in the first century Palestine and those of us still following him in the 21st century, that God is with those who are facing the powers and principalities hard at work to undermine the confidence in love. Jesus is with us, especially the us being pushed aside. One man who knew this well was the 20th century theologian Howard Thurman. Thurman is among my most favorite religious thinkers. He wrote several books. His most well-known one is called Jesus and the Disinherited. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. carried it with him everywhere he went. It contained the basic ideas that would become King's nonviolent approach to the civil rights movement. Thurman had experienced racism growing up in Daytona Beach, Florida. Because he was black, there was no school for him to attend beyond the seventh grade. But Thurman was determined. He was homeschooled with the help of a school principal. He completed and passed the eighth grade and went on to live with a family member in Jacksonville, where he attended Florida Baptist Academy. He graduated from Morehouse College and earned his seminary degree, and would go on to start the Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples in San Francisco. Thurman's vision was to create a worship space where all people, white, black, brown, Asian, could come together in the presence of God, and through God, discover the common bond that weaves us all together. The church had challenges. There were disagreements. But it's still in existence today. No amount of racism or bigotry or obstacles thrown in his way would stop Thurman from pursuing the dream of building beloved community in the still very segregated era of 1940s America. Thurman drew his strength and determination from his deep belief in Jesus as one who knew what it was to be a disinherited, a, pers a person for whom society was determined to keep down and press their back against the wall. And Thurman saw how Jesus answered the hate of his day by remaining doggedly committed to acting out of a place of love. And so he made that same commitment. And while Thurman is not part of our pantheon of Episcopal saints, his is a life that one can look to and see how the light of Christ burned brightly in him. That same light exists in each one of us. We can live lives worthy of emulating. We may never start a church or go to our deaths proclaiming our faith in Christ in the face of a bitter enemy. We can see the anger and the hurt and the discord in our world and face it with a spirit of mercy, compassion, and love. Blessed are you 
who risk ridicule from the world to remain steadfastly on the side of love. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
no good end them. Blessed be our neighbors. May, May we, we do unto others as we, we have them do to us. We pray for those who weep or who are in any kind of trouble or suffering, especially Megan, Sandy, the Meany, and the Walker families, Helene, Linda, Marge, Sally, Lynn, Carla, Nick, Sarah, Marianne, George, the Tucker family, James, Zachary, Renee, Hope, Stan, Tom, Jeff, Michael, Genevieve, the Potts family, Trinity, Zane, Richard, Lucy, Pat, and Ruth. May they know the comfort from their sorrows and relief from their worries, so that they may rejoice in the day and their hearts leap for joy. In our guidance and cycle of prayer, we pray for our congregations in Valdosta, Christ Church, Christ the King, and St. Barnabas. We also pray for our ecumenical partners in Valdosta, especially John the Evangelist Catholic Church. In our companion diocese of the Dominican Republic, we pray for the congregations in Santo Domingo, especially St. Philip the Apostle. Bring us all together as one communion in patience and love. Blessed be the suffering and blessed, blessed be the suffering and those who yearn for God's presence. May the God of God's spirit surrounding them in love. We pray for all who have died. We remember all those who we love and no longer see. David Bloom, June Harris, Jeanette Britton, Keith Harrison, Nancy Marcules, Vicki Herlewick. Brandon Alter, Betty Henriquez, Tiffany Marie Hunt Jones, Gail Eber, Tony Renee Carter, Gail Cunningham, Pansy Fulton, Charlotte Sampson, Van Penhoffen, Nancy Joe Weeks, Marilyn Morris, Mr. and Mrs. Vincent Ippolito. Grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom that your will for them may be fulfilled. May life perpetual shine upon them, and may we come to share with them in the inheritance of your kingdom. You may add your prayers and thanksgivings at this time, either aloud or silently. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not what you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humble ourselves. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may go right your will. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. Let's greet each other in peace. Peace.
on Facebook. I know that you can always join us here in our sanctuary space at 3565 Davis Road in Valdosta, Georgia. But thank you for joining us online. Um, today is the first Sunday of the month. That means it's a time to recognize people with birthdays in November. Anybody with a birthday, anniversary, celebrating something in November? Anniversary. Yeah. All right, anniversary. I'm gonna count as a birthday. All right. Super. So, if you would please, I'll get to that page myself. Uh, page 830 in the Book of Common Prayer. Prayer number 50.
problem that is endemic throughout the whole country. And not only large churches, but small churches are being attacked also. So not only and schools, you know, you know, you know the story. So um, please realize that there's things we need to do and we need to be visually watching what's happening around. Um, we have a vision statement, and I'm assuming y'all have read it because it's hanging up on the wall in the parish hall. It's called, it is a place of health, healing, and hope with unconditional love. Now we're working toward putting that into action with our mission statement. And um, we decided that we are already doing that, but we don't have a written mission statement. But we are doing that. So um, you can look around. We've got food for the hungry. We've got um, pumpkin patch. We're reaching out to the community. So there's different things that we are doing for that. Um, also, vestry is really important to the church. This is who runs our church, vestry. Um, if you have a desire to be a part of this, please um, sign up for it. You know, there'll be something soon that will say, do you want to run for vestry? Yes, please, please sign up. We're losing our junior warden and our senior warden this year. Um, so please think about it, pray on it, and open your hearts to ideas and thoughts about how you can enrich our church, because this is our church, and we want to make it the best that it possibly can be. Um, that's what I have on this. Okay. So now we're going to the pumpkin patch. And it got off to a slow start. Um, and, and again, I want to thank everyone that was here to unload that truck. Um, Charlie put his back. I don't know what you call it. What do you call it, Charlie? Front end loader. That's what it is. I'm sorry. All right. He brought all the pumpkins out. We had lots of folks inside the truck falling out pumpkins. There's like a line inside. John was there. Um, who else was there? Um, Lee Shirt was there. We had Bob Holder there. We had Michael Carroll there. Um, we had the Strassers there. Um, and we had um, Lee Shirt's son, Daniel, and his son, Evan, there. So we had a good group. Um, <clears throat> it's not for the faint of heart. We need some young folks. Uh, so we. We'd like to do this possibly next year. I will tell you that we did sell um, $8,650 worth of pumpkins. Woo! Not bad, not bad for our first year, and we get 30% of that, so all you mathematicians can figure that one out. Right, it's over $2,000. Um, what I'd like to do, and then this past week we were selling them just because we could. And we actually made $200 this past week selling them. So, um, and that money is our money. That money is definitely, all that 200 is ours. So we were really lucky with that. Charlie and Richard and Jim have been out there, and it's like every time I come out in the afternoon, it's like, where'd the head go? Where's the stall? So they were picking it up. They were taking out the bed pumpkins. I tell you what, it looks beautiful out there, and they have been doing such a fine job. Um, been out there sitting. What I'd like to do is that in a week or two, we do a debriefing meeting. Everyone that worked the pumpkin patch, bring your ideas because all I heard was, oh, next year we can do this. Next year we can do that. So please, please, I'd like to get an early start on it. But in January, we have to let them know if we want to do this again. So we have, oh, almost the whole year to come up with ideas and to make little committees to who's doing what. So, it's been wonderful. Um, all the pumpkins out there are edible. The pinkish ones are actually for stews. I looked it up. And, and that's one thing I would want to do is put out a sign here for what the different pumpkins are for. The blue ones are sweet. Um, you just put a little sugar and honey on and they're, they boil and eat them. Um, and then, like I said, every, everything else out there is edible. And what I would like you all to do is please feel free to take a pumpkin or two home with you today. Okay, and then I'm going to get in touch with uh, Jacob's Ladder. 
um, to see if they would like to have some pumpkins. And if you know of any farms that would use them, please let me know and we can contact them. Um, otherwise, I guess we're going to feed a lot of deer. <laughs> we'll have a lot of pumpkins growing in the woods. All right, but thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. The pumpkin patch was a success. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, and yeah, I want to just emphasize, uh, going back to the, the letters that people might have been receiving, just know that that's your mean, horrible priest wanting to have an accounting system in place in the church. So do not take this as, you know, any kind of punishment or anything like that. It's merely to make sure that we, our accounts, are the same as your accounts. And if they're not, we need to know. So that's when you go to Sarah or you go to Marilyn and say, not accurate. Uh, Carla, today we are packaging up packages. Um, yes, yes. The care package contents, they're all in the best of home. I mean, it's lots and lots of good stuff to put in the bags. But the people that can save and help place the goods in the bags, please stay. Please. Please. <laughs> I mean, because I mean, it's a lot more than I thought would be there. I actually bought more bags because we didn't have enough bags. I was here yesterday to give it a little count, but we need you. If you can stay, please stay and help us. Thank you. Um, also, just want to remind everybody that there's Thanksgiving here on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, there's apparently there's now a sign up sheet to say what you that you're coming and what you might be bringing. So check for that in the parish hall. Um, right now, right now we have about 18 people signed up. Wow. So it'll be a nice family dinner. Um, in your bulletins this week, and this will be the last time we're going to put it in the bulletin. There's a stewardship letter um, and the stewardship form. <laughs> Getting back to that again, just to say that what that is, is that's an opportunity for you to pray upon, you know, what is it that I want to give back to my community? And that's both your time, your talent, and your treasure. Um, if you cannot give us money, that's, you're not going to get kicked out of the church. Uh, if you can give us some time, that would be great, because there are a lot of ministries of this church that could use some attention and some help. So folks are stepping up now to help with the which is awesome. Um, and um, we need ushers. We need some more help with altar doing. Um, we need people, and you're the people. Um, even if I'm the one wearing the collar, we all are the ministers of this church as well. Um, um, Advent is coming as well. Um, Kathy is going to be contacting folks about um, are participating in our Advent service, and is there anything else that they need to know? Uh, no, um, no um, talked to a couple this morning already, but yeah. We'll okay. For lighting the candle each week. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, and then finally, I have a last note that uh, Tuesday, mercifully, will be the end of the midterm election season. Um, if you haven't voted, please do, because that is part of our duty as citizens of the country is to vote. Um, so, and be kind to the people that are at the polls working. Uh, I used to be a poll worker in Leon County. It is a long, long day. Um, and people come in with all sorts of attitudes and so forth, and, and you always have to remain very calm and pleasant with everybody. So be kind to those folks, because um, they're, they're doing a, a task on behalf of all of us. Any other announcements that need to be made? Okay. On November the 20th at 3 p.m., we will be having a transgender day of remembrance. This is something that we've done at St. Barnabas for quite some time. We would appreciate anybody coming. You're invited. Please, please come. We'll be having a, a small reception afterwards. If anyone can help with that or, you know, donate um, a dish or something, that would be very appreciated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. November 20th, 3 o'clock. <coughs> It'll be right here in this room. Uh, 
else. Just wanted to remind people you didn't get your lemon last week. There's plenty more this week. And if you did get them last week, why stop up with them next week too? And and oranges. And oranges. Lemons and oranges also. And then missions. <laughs> I, yeah, I actually used plenty of lemons this week. Awesome. Anything else? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. continues on page 372 in the Book of Common Prayer with Eucharistic Prayer D. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. 
and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. to our care so that in obedience to you our creator we might rule and serve all your creatures when our disobedience took us far from you you did not abandon us to the power of death in your mercy you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you again and again you called us into covenant with you and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation father you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you, to you from the gifts that you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise you, we bless you, you. We, we give thanks, thanks to you. you. We, we praise you, you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts of your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to praise your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. 
and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Barnabas and St. Anna Alexander and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
pray. Amen. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. We call Diane Holloman up to the altar. We send forth Diane Holloman to take the Eucharist this day to Lynn Crawford. May the prayers of this community go forth as you bring God's grace. Amen. Thank you. Verses 5, 6, 7, 8 of the Anthem. Please stand and sing. I would like to do a dismissal. Holy. A blessing, at least. Right. <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> We'll be ready to sing momentarily. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> Live without fear. Your creator made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you always. Amen. Amen. And now we will process to the columbarium. <laughs>
and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Ensure the certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life for our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to the Almighty God our brother Lee, and we commit his body to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord, the Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious to him. The Lord lift up his countenance upon him and give him peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Give graciously, we pray, with all who mourn, that casting all their cares on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, by your death you took away the sting of death. Grant to us your service so to follow in faith where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake up in your likeness. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Rest eternal, grant to him, O Lord. And let thy perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That is the Lord in the name of Christ. Thanks be God.